With a rigorous travel schedule and TV spotlight, pro wrestling stars have many crazy experiences, but sometimes they can go overboard. This is Wrestling Up in Here, 10 times wrestlers share too much personal info. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Up and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. The Bella Twins are reality TV stars and feel it's their duty to share as much of their personal lives with their audience. Nikki revealed her ex-fiance John Cena made her cut out wild sex stories that she was going to share about them in her memoir. I understood. It was great for him. I was kind of like, don't you want high fives on that? We were wild and he was strong, so it was a great story. Daniel Bryan even revealed the first time he was together with Brie, they were interrupted by the likes of Sheamus and Ted DiBiase Jr. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? We were naked and about to do our thing when we heard the sound of the door handle turning and the door popped open. Bree jumped under the covers as Teddy and Seamus barged into the room, inebriated as can be, with the off fella and all that. Cena was also on Total Divas thanks to his relationship with Nikki Bella, and during the show, Nikki talked about how Natalya peed herself in the ring during a match with Naomi in 2014. Cena proceeded to say, I pooped myself once. I had to throw my pants away. It was in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I had food poisoning, and I still went out to wrestle. Everybody knew. I was embarrassed. Cena went into details about it previously in a magazine interview, but there he had mentioned Winnipeg, so there's a chance he was either confused about the location, or he relieved himself in two different places. It was in Winnipeg, and I was wrestling Scott Steiner with Bull Buchanan as my lackey. I got food poisoning and thought I wouldn't be able to wrestle, but went out there anyway. I took a DDT, rolled out, and the timekeeper was there. I looked him in the eye and said, where do I puke? And he said, under the ring. So I went under the ring and puked, and everybody knew it. But as I was puking, I crapped my pants. Luckily, it was at the end of the match, but nothing has ever topped that since. Being the voice of modern WWE, Michael Cole as a commentator has had to deal with the likes of Vince McMahon in his ear. Taz recalled that Michael Cole was losing his cool during rehearsals for a SmackDown. While doing so, he was trashing McMahon. Unfortunately for him, he didn't know that his headset was a hot mic. Vince and the crew heard everything. For the rest of the day, Cole was running away from and avoiding McMahon, but eventually got caught and chewed out. On the Howard Stern Show, Candace Michelle revealed she had been involved in a softcore film early on in her career, which she would end up regretting. During the same interview, she revealed how she got her implants and how her boyfriend picked her up out of an LA club. In regards to her sexual adventures with Dolph Ziggler, Amy Schumer revealed to Howard Stern that it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't for me. The sex was too athletic. The first time I was like, oh, this is cool. Nobody's ever ragged all me. He's like spinning me like a globetrotter. I was like, oh my God, I felt so petite. It wasn't that crazy, but it felt like we were wrestling. There's a girl out there that will be so obsessed with him and psyched at all those events, but I wasn't the girl. Ziggler didn't mind Schumer's comments as he saw this as complimentary and admitted his mother asked him about the interview and what a few things meant which made it more than a little awkward. Virgil once talked about Andre the Giant saying he was intimate with four women at the same time and that he stacked them up like a sandwich before he went to town with his fingers. As disturbing as that may sound, Hulk Hogan also shared a story about Andre. While we stayed at a big hotel plaza downtown, Shinjuku in Tokyo, whenever we had something going on down in his hotel, he used to call me up when it was weird and perverted or crazy. He was a little wild. So there were these two cute little waitresses that worked out of the restaurant and they were just little cheese sized little teeny four foot six. Every time I was down there, they were always sitting on his lap. So I'm in my hotel room and Andre calls, boss, come down here. You've got to see this. When I walk in the room and the bathroom door is open, he's on the toilet doing number twos and getting oral from one of these little waitresses at the same time.
When Paul Bearer was The Undertaker's manager, the two would travel together while still staying in their roles. Unfortunately for Bearer, one time he had to go to the bathroom desperately, but they needed to buy something first, and Undertaker said Paul had to be the one to pump the gas. According to Bearer, he could not take it and the sight and the sound of the hose was too much for him and he ended up wetting himself because they were not going to drop their gimmick even at a random gas station. The Undertaker found it hilarious and laughed a lot and when the news got around, when they arrived at the event they were going to only an hour later, Vince McMahon himself was waiting for them there with a pack of adult diapers to give to Bearer. On busted open radio, Jake Roberts touched on The Undertaker approaching him to ask him about strip joints. Unfortunately for the phenom, Roberts' taste in parties were too much even for one of his standing. He comes to me and says, hey, I hear you know where all the good strip joints are at. And I'm like, in the world? Yes, I know them all. And he's like, well, I'll travel with you. And I said, oh boy, why don't you go back to playing basketball because you're not going to be able to hang with me. And I said, I'll kill you. And a few weeks later, I believe he was in pretty bad shape. Something about alcohol poisoning. Yeah, it was a chemical world and I was cheating man. He didn't know it. I wasn't going to tell him. He rolled with me for quite a while. In an interview, Kevin Nash talked about how Vince McMahon pulled him and Taker into his office to ask that they no longer go to strip clubs while on the road, as WWE was concerned about their public image. Nash went to one a few days later, and when he got there, he saw Taker with the two sitting together and talking. Yet another story about Taker from Ric Flair shows his wild side as Flair recalled. He and I and Harvey Grant and Kurt Henning started out again. That damn Jack Daniels. Next thing, I woke up in the morning with some woman next to me. There were two women actually and I couldn't find my Rolex. I woke her up and said where's my Rolex? She said you threw it in a plate of spaghetti at Sabatino's and said you had 11 of them. No big deal. While in WCW, Raven and Perry Saturn were thrown out of a hotel due to shenanigans that included hiring two strippers that they were intimate with while naked. Then while knew they made a slip and slide in the hallway of the hotel, both were drugged up and they tore the pipes from the sink in one of the rooms as water emptied into the hall. Then using the fire extinguisher like a jetpack and a device meant for a sex strap to Saturn's head, Raven created what was a makeshift bowling alley. They flooded the entire floor of the hotel with them eventually being thrown out. Because he wanted some gator shoes, Rowdy Roddy Piper once stopped an alligator while traveling through Florida. Piper shot the gator twice with a pistol, then it slid in the water and was still. He had hit it on the head with rocks and it did not move, which led him to believe it was dead. He and Kevin Sullivan stripped down of their tights and waded into the water when the gator got up and dove back just as Piper was near it. Both men then hightailed it for the car. Piper would also have a match against Victor the Wrestling Bear. Unfortunately, another wrestler put honey on Piper's pants ahead of the match. The bear grabbed the arm of Piper and brought him down. When Piper found the stomach, Victor found the honey. So he looked up all the honey and when he found there was no more, he pulled down Piper's pants. Then put his snout where no snout should ever go. Hello, I'm out, man. Piper was terrified. He was crying and punching his snout while the others were looking on. They darted the bear and he crawled out from under that bear naked. He then tripped and fell headfirst on the concrete, knocking himself out, giving onlookers an interesting view. And these were times when wrestlers revealed too much about themselves. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.